Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Vicious, and it's time for us to pick up right where we left off on the last episode of Let's Play Bastion. It's time to see what happens when we put this new core in here. The cores. They remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be alright. And the Bastion grows yet again. Well, look what we have here. Let's see if we can put a memorial. Lost and found. I have no idea which one is better. So we'll just go with uh, the memorial. The memorial. Here, yeah, kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. So construct a memorial to Salombia. Oh wow, so you have you have requirements you have to meet to be able to build these, I see. Looks like a phone call's coming in. I have to take a short break here. Okay, back after that. I had a little phone call to take care of. So let's see here, anyways. Build the memorial and bastion is the only one you have to do for this first one, so we'll take care of that. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. This one here. Earned first prize and seven proving grounds. I've only unlocked three right now, so there's no way I can have that. Culture. We have to gain the required number of mementos. So have I got that? Secret skills. This is land pieces. Different species. Down here. Deliver a crushing blow for 47 damage, it looks like. I haven't done that yet, I'm surprised. Or have I? Yeah, it doesn't let me have it. Hmm. Oh. So far, this is all we have. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. Let's go ahead and move on to the next area. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. Now we got a choice of center brick fort. Pyth Orchard. Let's go to the fort. There's only one way in the Cinder Brick Fort. The hard way. Oh. This is gonna be a mean place, isn't it? Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the fort's crawling with windbags. Or starve, or face the kid. Ah, oh.
There we go. Young and old keep fighting for the fort. Oh, I hate these guys. Second new weapon. At least the marshals left the kid a parting gift. Something the windbags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through the greasy eyes. Check out. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want is a warm place to stay and a decent meal. The calamity drove the windbags topside. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. What? Oh, there's a hole there. Nice. Ah, almost dead. Windbags can't use the martial supplies, but the kids sure can. We haven't used the this skill yet, I can handy. As for the windbags, Cinderbrick gave them enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for wanting it though. Ah, that's right. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. Uh oh. Off oh, I go.
There we go. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past. Is history. Uh oh, looks like I put myself right into another stage. Didn't need to do that yet. Started. 
fair to say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. He never knew his old man, but he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like his. Having his mama's hair to the kid no favors while he was growing up, but he learned to hold his own out there. School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. Thanks to folks like the kid, the walls kept Ceylonia safe from whatever's out there. The elements, the aura, you name it. Oh, it's these guys. Okay, these guys. Once the kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too. Wow. city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found either. Ah, crap. So this is like a survival stage. Oh, these guys are pain. Wouldn't be taking this on with my musket, I'd be using my bow. So, what did the kid do? Why he went right on back to the walls for another five years? Why? It's like a stronger version of him. In the history of Ceylandia, nobody has ever volunteered for a second shift on the walls. How there, kid learned to fend for himself. Learn to build, learn to break.
kid are in good standing with the marshals. They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. What was that saying? Anyway. I guess that skill sounds good as a butt was. One night, on one of his expeditions, the ground beneath him shuddered, cracked, and split apart. He saw nothing where the world used to be. The calamity happened just like that. All the kid had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. Pretty much, it's got a crappy skill right now, and I got a crappy gun as well. Through twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him. Oh crap. That's a really, really, really big guy. Ah, they're destroying the whole freaking place. Finally arrived at Ceylandia's vaunted safe haven. He and no one else. Ah. God, I hate these guys. Thankless work from a man who ain't even asked his name. Sure, I may be the one who dreamt up the walls and the bastion, but the kid made him real, not me. What the hell is that? Oh, 
Oh, I can fly. That's not good. Oh crap! I'm almost dead. say I'll never forget him, or what he's doing, what he's done. I surely would. Oh my gosh, I beat it. First try with a really ineffective loadout. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Alright guys, that was more than enough content for that episode. We beat that reflection, that was pretty intense. So, uh, we'll cut it off here and I'll see you guys next episode.